So the next component of the desk scene, I'm going to focus on creating a mug. And there's there's a couple of new things that we're going to go over um, while making this mug. And uh, we're going to use a lot of the same tools that we've looked at in earlier presentations. Uh, but I'm going to get started by creating um, a simple coffee mug. We'll apply a couple of different textures to this object. I'll get started by using a cylinder object. And uh, I'll just rough out the basic shape uh, of the cup. So I'm just kind of you know trying to figure out relative to um, the rest of the objects on my desk what an appropriate size would be. Um, I feel like relative to the paper that looks pretty good. I mean I can always go back and tweak this thing as long as my proportions are correct. Um, I think everything else will start to fall into place. So this the the task of modeling this is going to be a little bit is, is going to be fairly simple, but we will we'll look at a few new tools. Um, my basic goal here is that. I added a little bit of vertical segmentation to this object because what I want to do is I want to be able to pull a handle out from the side of this mug. And we'll take a look at the bridge tool uh, and, and, and model this and, and connect two different ends of the same piece of geometry to itself. Um, and so in order to set this up, basically what I'm looking at is I'm taking a look at my, uh, my cylinder object and I'm trying to imagine uh, you know what the mug shape is and where the handle is going to come out so I'm just gonna jump into my doodle tool here and my basic goal is that somewhere right about in here I want to be able to select a polygon and I want to be able to extrude that polygon out and connect it down here with another set of polygons and so the first decision that I'm making is about the segmentation in the object so I'm just gonna get rid of my little doodle here I'll go back to the move tool and I'm gonna select my cylinder again and I'll bump up the uh, um, height segments here. And really what I'm looking for is I'm looking for enough information to where if I select a polygon that I can extrude it straight out and connect it with a polygon down here. And so just at, at I've arrived at a height segmentation of five and that seems like it'll work pretty well. And I'm really looking at kind of two polygons here. Um, so that looks pretty good. That, that was the decision based on, on the height segmentation. I'm going to get to the task of, of actually modeling inside the mug as well. And maybe I'll even fill it up with some coffee or some tea or something like that. So right off the bat, I'm going to call this object mug. And just like I did in previous presentations, I could copy this object, create a new document and paste and call this the mug object. Uh, but this time around, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to model straight in my desk scene project. Now I could start to take a closer look at the layers panel. The layers panel is a really powerful panel uh, inside Cinema 4D that allows us to manage our scenes uh, in a very effective way. And the way that this works is that um, in the object manager, we have this little check mark, and that is whether or not this generator, this object is available. We've looked at that. Just to the left of that, we have um, these, uh, what's referred to as the stoplights and whether this object is visible or invisible in the preview in, and in the render. And we can ignore that. And just to the left of that, this big bullet over here, uh, this is um, a quick icon to gain access to our layer browser and, and manage content through our layers. And if you look down here, way in the right-hand corner, we have the Attributes Manager. Underneath the Attribute Manager is the Layers Manager. Now, the layers currently don't have, there's no content, there are no layers. I'll go back to the, uh, the Attributes Manager. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the mug and I'm going to add it to a layer. So I'll click on this, this bullet here. I'm just left clicking and I have a choice. I can open up the Layer Manager, which is just that tab that we just looked at, or I can add this object to a new layer. So I'll add it to a new layer. And the minute that I do, you can see that that, that bullet turns into a color. So I now have an orange layer inside uh, Cinema 4D. And I got a couple of different options now. If I left click on it, I could either add more objects to that same layer. Um, I could add a new layer. I could remove the object from a layer or I could always open up the layer manager. And again, opening up the layer manager is the same as clicking on the layer tab down here. And when I do that, you can see that I have an orange layer. It's currently called layer. And I might double click on this and rename it. And I might dedicate a layer just to my mug or maybe to the objects that are sitting on top of my desk. I also might create a layer for um, all the lights in the environment. And uh, so I can do that a couple of different ways. I could right click right inside the layer manager, or I can go up here into my object manager and just click 
on that icon, left click. And I could add that to an existing layer or I could say add to new layer. Now, when I add to a new layer, it, it kind of randomly comes up with these colors. And I could change that color if I want to, but, but it, 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 it's really just for organizational purposes. And I actually kind of like that my light layer has become yellow. So I'm gonna call this my lights layer. And any light in the scene with the exception of my lamp, maybe I'll throw inside this layer so that I can manage these more effectively. So I'll go up to uh, my, uh, an area light that I threw in the scene and I'll just left click and I'll say add to layer and I'll add it to my lights layer. So I can go through and I can organize scenes based on layer content. Maybe I'll create another layer that says environment that includes things like the floor and the walls and the window and all, all kinds of things. Now, one of the many advantages to working in layers is that if I wanna hide all of the content that's inside my scene, I'm gonna focus on my mug layer for a moment and I have a lot of different control through the layers manager. I could choose to solo the content on that layer. So this first row, this S column, allows me to solo any of the content that is on that layer. I can solo multiple layers, so I can turn on if I have other layers, I can tell each of the individual layers to solo, uh, and then I'm just seeing the content on the layer. And, and in this case, in the case of my desk scene, there's a huge advantage to me being able to hide temporarily all the content in the scene and focus on just the mug when I'm modeling. Now I don't have to deal with all of the content in the object manager. I don't have to visually deal with inadvertently selecting on, on, on different objects. So again, I can solo the content. And if I roll over each one of these, uh, each one of these icons, I should get a tooltip that pops up. Let me just turn off the solo. Um, I can also uh, look under the view menu and I can see what each one of these columns are. So with the mug, if I, if I simply want to look at this in the viewport, Okay, I can, I can show and hide content based on the viewport or the preview. I can show and hide the content based on a render. I can hide the content, if you pay attention up here to the mug, I can, I can hide content in the object manager. So if I am working on a really complex object, maybe I build a robot and my robot is made up of hundreds of, con you know, hundreds of different elements. Or maybe I don't wanna see the lights temporarily for the content in my object manager, I could just click and mute that content within the object manager. I can also lock content based on layers. I can mute the animation associated with it and, and, and so on. So I have a tremendous amount of control working with layers. And I would suggest that um, we work layers into our workflow. Now I'll continue to talk about layers um, as we go. Uh, but I'll assume that you're experimenting with that and I'll show you some workflow and, and, and the advantages of layers as we take a deeper dive into the, to the desk scene. I'm gonna jump back into my layers project or my layers tab and I'll take advantage of uh, this by soloing the mug and I'll go back to my attributes manager so that I can modify the object. Now, back to the task of modeling this mug. I need to make a decision as to whether or not the rotational segmentations are the right number that I need. And I'm actually gonna leave it at 36, but I could make a case to reduce that as well. Um, but what I wanna do is I, I wanna make this editable and I wanna start to select the top polygons and start to extrude and look at the different kinds of extrude. Now I'm gonna go into the live select tool. And before I do, I remember what happened when we modeled the apple. I remembered that um, the top cap is actually a separate object uh, at this point. Even though this is all embedded in the same piece of geometry, the caps are, are kind of disconnected from the rest of the object. So what I'll do is I'll go up, if I can remember where that is, mesh commands, and I'll do a quick optimization. Okay, and if I wanna know what the quick key is, I'll look in the bottom left-hand corner and I can see that UO is the quick key combination, but I'll just choose it from that menu. I'll choose to optimize. And at this point, I know that my caps are now welded to the cylinder shape of the object, and so I can get back to the task of modeling. I have the, the, the live select tool selected. I have the polygon mode or co polygon component selected, and I'll just select the entire top of this object. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do an inner extrusion or an extrude inner, and I'll go to mesh create We've looked at the inner extrude or extrude inner briefly. And remember, if I extrude inner, and I just drag over in the negative space here, um, what that will do is that will create geometry that's parallel with the surface geometry, okay? And so that'll give me a little bit of an inset. 
And now I can go back under Mesh, Create, and I'll choose to do a standard extrusion, but rather than extruding outward, I'll just extrude and push this down. Now, I'm gonna Command Z and undo that because when I do this extrusion, um, I actually wanna be able to see this in multiple viewports, specifically the front viewport. I'm just gonna back out, or maybe not the front because of the, the, the view mode that I've chosen. I'm gonna look at this through the right view. So I'm actually gonna do my extrusion in the perspective view, so I'll click and drag to the left, but I'm actually looking in my right view because I can see through this and I can extrude and I'm watching that surface, I'm watching the axis and how that moves and I'm gonna release it right where I want uh, the bottom of my cup to be. And so by looking through the right viewport down here, while I'm extruding, I get a really clear sense of where that surface is. That, so I didn't extrude through the bottom of the mug, I didn't kind of randomly extrude somewhere just halfway down the mug, uh, and I did that without looking through the perspective view. So that looks pretty good. That's the rough shape of the mug that I want. Um, and ultimately what I'll do is I'll throw this in an extrude nerves to kind of smooth this thing out. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna look at this object straight down um, one of the axes and I'll choose that axis. And I'm, I'm not making an arbitrary choice. I really wanna look at this object um, from the right side. Okay, so, or, or, or excuse me, the, the front of the object. So I'm looking down the Z axis and I'm gonna rotate and from the right side of this object, I'm gonna choose a couple of polygons here. So I'm gonna go into Live Select, Polygon Mode, and I'll zoom in a little bit so I get a, a cleaner selection. And I wanna select that set of polygons that's gonna be the start of my handle. Now, I'm gonna hold down the Shift key, and I'm gonna select two companion uh, uh, polygons down at the bottom so that I can do this extrusion all at the same time. And usually when I'm doing this much modeling, rather than jumping in through this uh, mesh create menu and, and grabbing these tools. I mean, I could peel this off and, and park that over here. Um, but what I prefer to do is change my layout from startup or standard to modeling. And that'll give me access to the tools that I want down here at the bottom of the screen. I want to extrude. I'm going to extrude outwards. Okay, I'll extrude out again. Okay, and by extruding out that, that, oops, that second time, I'll just kind of change my view here. Um, I've actually um, uh, gave myself a couple of polygons down here and a couple of polygons over here that I can connect to each other to kind of close off this handle. Now this handle's, you know, it actually looks pretty big and clunky right now and it probably will continue to do so. Um, but what I want to do is I want to start to explore this bridge tool. Now, I, I could, the, the next step, I could do a couple of different ways. What I could do is I could go extrude and I could extrude some more. And I could individually rotate these faces back towards each other and try to close this off. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these, these two polygons at the top of the handle. And I'll select these two polygons by holding down shift, those two polygons that are facing each other and I'll choose to bridge those polygons together. Now, just to demonstrate this so that it, 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 we can see this a little bit more clearly, I, this is not required, but I'm gonna do a, an extrusion downwards so that they're both extruding towards each other. Okay, because remember, an extrusion extrudes perpendicular to the face. It extrudes in its normal direction of that polygon surface. Now, what I wanna do, and I'll zoom way in to see this, I want to use the bridge tool while I have these polygons selected and I want to select two corners or two points of this object that will create a logical bridge. So I'm looking down here and I don't see the bridge tool here. I'm sure I can click on these tabs and discover it, but I think what I'll do is I'll go under mesh commands and I'm looking for the bridge tool. I don't see it. So let me go under create. There it is. This is the tool that I'm looking for. Mesh, Create Tools, Bridge. Now when I bridge, you can see my, my, I still have my polygons selected. And what I wanna do is I wanna roll down this corner and click and drag. And, and as I'm dragging, it's trying to draw a connection point. Okay, and so as I drag it around, it's gonna snap. And what I wanna do is I wanna, I wanna snap it to its corresponding uh, corner. In other words, I don't want to cross this because if I release, you can see that I've actually just inverted and turned my geometry inside out. So I'll undo that. I want to drag it straight up. I see it snapping and I'll release. And what that did 
was just kind of close that gap. So I bridged two polygon surfaces together from the same model. Okay, so I have that basic structure of, of the mug created. Okay, I'll throw this inside a hypernerves object. Hypernerves object. I just create, I'm, I'm clicking and I'm creating a bunch of hypernerves. I'm scratching my head saying, why don't I see the hypernerves in uh, the object manager? And that's because I'm using layers and I've soloed the mug. And so I have to unsolo it because by default, any object that I create is not going to be on that layer. So um, I need to take this mug and throw it inside uh, the hypernerves. And so I need to add that. It makes sense to me that, that that's part of the mug now. So I need to add it to the orange layer. So I have a couple of different options. I could click on that bullet and choose to add it to that layer, or I could do this technique where I just click and drag this orange dot and do this paint technique where I paint over it. So if I wanted to add all this stuff down here to the orange layer or the yellow layer, I could just click and drag and paint down. Now all that stuff has been added to that layer. I'm gonna undo because I really don't wanna do that. Now, my mug looks a little glitchy, and that's because there's a couple things that's going on. Um, you know, my, my handle does not look proportionate to the rest of the mug. It, I can barely get my pinky in there. Um, I also want this, this shape to be out a little bit further. Um, I, I want this hole to be a little bit bigger, so I really need to get back in. Uh, I'll solo the mug layer. I need to get back in and start, start modeling this so that uh, it makes a little bit more sense. So... I'm going to select the mug and I'm just going to do this really quickly just to cover some, some modeling techniques that I haven't used. And, and, and this is more selection techniques rather than modeling techniques. Um, I really want to select all this geometry up, up here that makes the top half of the mug. And I, I don't want, so, so what I want to do is I want to move this handle stuff up. Okay. And so what I'm talking about doing is going in here and kind of clicking all these points that make up the top part of the handle. I'll, I'll just shift click and do a real rough selection and kind of move this stuff up. Make sure that I get all, all those points in there. I'm shift clicking. Okay, what I wanna do is I wanna move all that stuff up so that I'm making the hole in the handle a little bit bigger. But what I don't wanna do is I, I don't really wanna create these, these dramatic angles inside uh, the mug. So see how I left this point behind? If I undo, these points kind of run in line with all the rest of the points in the object. So it, it came from the segmentation of this object. And in this case, I really won't get, you know, too much artifacting on this model. But if I'm trying to apply really complicated uh, textures to this, I would get some, some kind of strangeness up here under uh, the handle. So um, I think what I'll do is I'm going to split my viewport out. I'm going to look at this from probably the front side or, or maybe the, the, the right side. I like the front view, but, but I want to display this um, simply maybe in line mode for a moment. And what I'll do is I'll experiment with different selection strategies. I'm going to go to the Live Select tool. I'm going to go to the Attributes Manager, and I'm going to make sure that only select visible elements is off. We've looked at that button before, and so now when I click and drag across uh, the right side, I'm actually selecting everything uh, in line with that. So that selection in the perspective viewport with the default setting of the tool would have been really complicated, but simply by changing the mode of that tool and dragging across in the right view, I got a really nice selection here. So what I'll do is I'll just take those points and I'll move them up. Okay, and I can do that in the perspective view. I'll take advantage of this view and I'll just click and drag across here. And I'm selecting all the points that I think that I want. There we go, and I'll take this and I'll move that down. So I'm creating space up here. And I can also kind of tidy up, uh, um, I can make the, the handle a little bit smaller. So now I'm really kind of paying attention to the handle and make sure that it's proportionate all the way around. So I'll do the same thing to the top. So basically I'm looking to see that the, the size over here kind of is equivalent to the size, the height of the handle. So I'm just kind of moving that up. And so now I'm starting to see some symmetry over here. I'll also do some real simple sculpting um, of the handle. So I'll turn only select visible back on and I'll do this through the perspective view. So maybe I'll grab those points at the top and I'll take that and I'll just kind of move it down a little bit. So I'll create a little bit of a curve there. I'll do the same thing over here. 
I'll select those points and I'll just move them up. So I'm kind of creating a little bit of a curve there. And then I'll just do some real quick loop selections here. And I'll move these points out. Okay, so I can, I can keep kind of, you know, playing around with some of these values and actually that's not gonna give me exactly the shape that I want. I'd need to move these points out um, up here it looks like as well. So maybe I'll select these two points here and, or excuse me, those three points, kind of pull that stuff out. So I'm really looking at the curve of that. Okay, and that looks, you know, pretty good, at least at least for the for the sake of the demonstration, I'll throw the hyper nerves back on. And you can see that I'm kind of starting to get somewhere with the handle. So I'm paying close attention to, to, to what's going on with the handle. So I'll continue to clean this up offline. Um, but in the next presentation, I want to talk about um, applying um, uh, textures to this object and my goal is I'm going to apply a, a, a base color to this object and then I'm going to apply like a decal or a logo some kind of icon that, that maps directly to this mug. We'll do that in the next presentation.